He loves me. Wave your hand if you believe in Jesus. Love you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. He loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Sing it with me. Say yeah. Is that 
permission, you may be seated. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. For truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Is there anybody else in here rejoicing besides me on today? How many of you glad about what the Lord has done and continue to do in your life? Come on, let's, come on. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. For he alone is worthy. Amen. The first youth Sunday, amen, in this year. Right. Amen. To kick off the year. Amen. Because listen, I want, we're going higher, Greater New Bible Way. Youth Department, you're going higher. The only way we go from here is what? Up. Amen. That's the only way we go from here is up. Amen. And who better to call, amen, and to start the year off right? Amen. Then I was state youth president. I want you to stand all over the building, Greater New Bible Way. We're standing all over the building. I'm going to ask if everyone would cease from walking. Amen. Let no one distract you. Amen. Even though it's youth, I believe that there's a word in the house for all of us on today. Hallelujah. Will you help me? Amen. And welcome to this great podium, this great man of God, none other than the own elder, Jose Malone. Come on, put your hands together. Let us bow our heads. Talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the undefeatable name. How many know it's undefeatable? We praise you and we shout out with joy for what you are doing in our lives right now. And for the anointing power of the Holy Ghost that's been demonstrating himself throughout this, this church all this morning which is helping us to go deeper. Lord, I want to say, I want to go deeper. Deeper in your word. Which will help us to soar higher in your will. And in two, what you have given us to do. We turn now our eyes unto the hills, which come into our help. And we know that all of our help, if you know all your help come from the Lord, let me say yes, Lord. Comes, hey, 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 comes from you, my boy. We are anticipating new wisdom and deeper insights into this wonderful sanctified life that you have endorsed and sanctioned upon us. Sanctified. It's the best way to live. God, there's no other way for us to live any greater than being sanctified. If you're glad you're sanctified, clap your hands and say, Lord, so glad I am. Sanctified. And I'm talking about those of us who have willingly said yes to you and everything you want us to do. Surely we will bless the name, Lord. We will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue be in our mouth. Now, Lord, we are becoming more and more confident every day about who we are in you. And so we give you praise right now. I said we give him praise right now. Come on, right now. And 
writing their scripture, when they were reading their scripture and writing their scripture then, it was talking about a tax. A taxi was on the shoulder of Hezekiah being removed. But that was symbolic. Of, the tax was symbolic of sin that's on our shoulders, that's upon us when we don't know the Lord. Amen. But when we come to know the Lord, Amen. oh, I think I'm going to break it down just a little bit here. Ever since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, all of the burdens that the devil brings upon us, the blood of Jesus destroys them all. Yeah. Look at somebody that said, you are anointed to break through. Anointed to break through. Whatever you're going through, I'm going to preach just a little bit now. You can break through it. Got to want to. Some of y'all don't want to get rid of that man that's beating you for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Some of y'all like that. That's silly. That's crazy. I tell my young ladies, a man never even raised his hand to hit you, you better get away from him. Don't even give him a chance to hit you. Because he's not a man. First of all, a real man ain't going to raise his hand to hit you. So he's going to do anything, he's going to reach out to love you. Oh, what am I talking good? You're better than that. Because somebody said, I know I am. And don't you hear him either. Hey, 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 my mother, before she got saved, I ain't never seen my dad hit my mama. Never seen him raise his hand to hit her. But I seen her. <laughs> Don't y'all tell her. <laughs> my mama, she was mad. That little young, young thing just started slanging them licks. My dad's a girl. Go, on, go. On. They both were young, you know. And we just. As long as mama was hitting it, that's all right. But if he got to try to hit back now, we can ready, ready to step in. All them boys, we can ready to step in now. And daddy would take all them licks and back out the back door and say, girl, you look going crazy. But he never hit her. And I respect my dad for that. But thank God my mother got a breakthrough. She's sanctified. Now, when I talk about this, she said, boy, oh, I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. Hey, man. Y'all enjoying this already? God bless you. Now, quick, God, wait for him to sanctify himself. God bless you. Good to see you. Let me tell you something. That's very important about the anointing, and I'm going to move on and stop before I go any further. Those of us who read our Bibles, we know that the Bible teaches us that the anointing destroys the yoke. Yes. However, some religious people take issue with us saying the anointing breaks the yoke because the actual word in our scripture says today that the anointing destroys and not break. When something is destroyed, it's gone. But yeah, when God heals you of cancer, it's gone. Another one may come back, but that's not coming back because God took it. Somebody said it's gone. It's destroyed. All the evidence has been eliminated. But when it's broken, it's just, it's just non-functional. It's dysfunctional, not functional, but it's still there. You can see it. And only you and you alone can, can let it come back together again if you want it to. But let me talk about that a little bit here. The anointing breaks to you because the actual word says destroy. But if you read your Bible like we should, read it consistently, you will find that there are other scriptures that actually use the word break or broken. Matter of fact, there are seven other scriptures that use the word broken and with the yoke. So the anointing does break the yoke. But let's talk about what, why it says that. Why did it use the word broke instead of destroyed there? This explains why everything in your life that is a burden to you it's not going to be destroyed. I don't care how you try to make it disappear and go away. There are some things that are not going to disappear or go away. You can break through them. You can break through them and be delivered. But it's not going away. Everything may not totally be destroyed. But you can certainly break through it. Alcohol is not going away. You can be delivered 
from alcohol, Amen. from being an alcoholic. Amen. I don't like to call folks drunkards and stuff like that. That's not good to say, but they were an alcoholic. Amen. God can deliver you for, from it. But I don't care how much you want to, them, after them liquor stores are going nowhere. Bootleg houses not going anywhere. Y'all know where every one of them are right here in North Rock. Right? Amen. The, 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 the dope house is not going to. God can deliver you from it. But he's not going to take away that alcohol. Why? Because he wants you to have a reminder of what he brought you from. He knows that a test is coming up the road. When you get off that job. Lord, am I still living? <laughs> so somebody don't got mad enough to shoot me. Thank you, Jesus. When you get off that job and you think about what you've been through on that job and the stress you've been under, and you pass that liquor store, the devil said, You need a drink. Oh, you better come on here. Tell you, Pastor Rogers ain't looking. Go in there and get you a drink. Hallelujah. But you've been delivered. And you don't have to stop. They ever go as far as to take, go and get you one and get one for him too. He may want one. Go and get you uh, this and that, whatever you, whatever you want. But look at your name and say, I've been anointed to break through. When you can pass that liquor store and you know you really want to drink, you know you've been delivered. When you can pass the drug house and you know you've been delivered, you've been, you, you have a breakthrough. And I'm anointed to break through. The other thing may not be totally destroyed, but there's some things God leaves there as a reminder of what he brought you through and how he can deliver you from every burden. A yoke is something that burdens us down, weighs us down. I'm coming to a close. A yoke is something that puts us in bondage. A yoke is something that holds you back. And the devil wants to hold you back. And the blessings of God wants you to move forward. And have a good and a holy life. Look at, look at somebody say, you want to have a good life. A holy life. Separated life. And I said what I said is because I'm a, real, a realist. You save and you feel with the Holy Ghost, the devil won't be after you. If you think the devil's not going to tempt you, you better go and come again. But that's why we teach in the church of God in Christ that you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is what destroys every yoke. That's what gives you the power to be anointed is having the Holy Ghost. Because if you're relying upon your own strength, you're not going to be able to make it. But I thank God. Help us. I thank God. For the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, we can have it today. Our subtopic says that we are breakthrough believers. Do you believe that? Yes. You are a breakthrough believer. If you know you are, wave your hands and say, yes, Lord. Yes. Breakthrough believers are people of the anointing. We are like Jesus. Jesus was anointed to set the captive free. Luke, what was that? Luke 4, 4 and 18, I believe it is. In other words, he was anointed to break people out of whatever they are in. Or whatever that is holding them in captivity. He was anointed to break people out of bondage. He was anointed to break yokes off of people. Help me say, you don't have to be burdened down. You don't have to be bound. You can be made free through the blood of Jesus. Now, I really want a good read. June, I want you to give me some kids from real quick. A good reader, a good reader. Somebody's going to read it good and loud, like, like they taught us to read it. I remember mother, when Elder Gemma used to have us, they had to read on gospel. They had to have, you know what I think about that, Elder uh, Dennis? I know you do because your dad used to do it. Read on gospel. They would post scriptures and they would have folks to get them. And you had to read that Bible like you had the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You couldn't read it weak. And so and so they are. Uh, come on, show them how they told you. They, uh, uh, 2 Samuel 5 and 17. Okay. 2 Samuel 5 and 17. And then we're coming to a close. We are anointed to break through. Uh -huh. There you go. 
2 Samuel chapter 5, the 17th verse. But when the Philistines heard, when they heard uh -huh. that they had anointed David king, when they had anointed David king of who? Over who? Over Israel. Come on. All the Philistines came up to seek David. Let me tell you what. Now read the last of little sentence and then we're going to stop there. And, and David heard of it and went down to the hope. When people got something against you and getting ready to come against you, yeah. God going to send a warning. The Holy Ghost will let you know when folks coming after you. David found out. But let me tell you why they came after David. Why? Well, let's go back up where it says, when the Philistines heard that David had what? They had anointed David king. Now I'm pointing. You, there's a difference between being anointed in a position than just being appointed in a position. Some folks lie and cheat to the bishop and everybody else to get positions. They get it the wrong way. Amen. And people don't say nothing to you because they know you didn't get it right in the first place. But folks get jealous in their spirit when God anoints you. When Pastor Dennis was here, he was anointed pastor of this church. Now once they, they found out that David had been what? Anointed king. They said, we're going to go get him. Notice the Bible. Thank you, Sister Jude. The Bible says that when the Philistines heard that David was anointed king of Israel, yeah. they went out against him. Now that tells us that the anointing attracts opposition. Yeah. Oh, can I say that again? Yeah. The anointing attracts opposition. Yeah. Don't feel bad when people start talking against you out of jealousy. Because they're upset with the anointing that God has. What you're doing and what God meant. No, no, let me change that. Let me change that. Not what you're doing. But what God is doing through you. People can't stand to see that. They think they the ones should be up there. They want that. They want the glory. But they don't want to know about the story. What you have to go through to get where you are. A lot of young preachers see preachers driving Cadillacs. They driving business now. They got helicopters now, ladies. They got planes, jets, and all this stuff. Except stuff that some they don't, some of them don't even really need. But the young preachers look at all that, that's what they want. But they don't know what those preachers went through. I used to drive, I used to drive a 1919 get out and push. <laughs> you don't know what a 19, and you know what, Dick? It had I had some Maypop tires on there. You know, they made pop, they made pop in the time. <laughs> running revivals. Ella Lips and I running from here and there. Sister Leona, we ran a revival a whole week. And we got uh, uh, $15 a piece. He got 15 I got 15 He had children. Since he had four children, I gave him five of my 15 I wasn't going to give him that 10 <laughs> You got some preachers who ain't preach one time for $15. They think they got to be paid. But every time you do something for God, don't look for no pay. I, I said something. You're doing it for the glory and honor of God, but souls will be saved. People will be healed and delivered. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just because you can, you got a lot of people that can sing beautifully with a melodious voice, but they don't have an anointing. And then one of these mothers can get up, one of these deacons can get up, just the Greek, the voice is just squeaking and cracking. But the anointing is on them. The power of God is falling in with them. that song that they're singing that the people falling between the pews and to pull them out between the pews by the heels. That you just, because the anointing is so great. Look at somebody say, it's the anointing that makes a difference. Ooh, I know I'm talking good. I'm going to stop you. I got to stop. Young folks, I want you to seek for the Holy Ghost. Young folks, seek for the Holy Ghost. Because when you have the Holy Ghost, that gift that you have, God will add to it. He will enhance it and make it greater and be used to reach out to folks. And folks will be delivered when you sing. When you be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Hey, hey, I feel like Bishop Ford this morning. Overcame his opposition. I said that the anointing it attracts opposition, and it also tells us that the anointing also can help you overcome your opposition. If you're anointed, you're going to attract opposers. 
uh, uh, but you don't have to let the opposers get you down. The anointing of Jesus Christ can give you power to break through any opposition. David overcame his opposition. Amen. He broke through the opposition that came upon him. And like David, you are anointed to break through whoever opposes you. I said, like David, be my brain on home. Like David, you are anointed over whatever causes you to feel that you're not anointed. If you want a breakthrough, I said, if you want a breakthrough, you can have your breakthrough. You have to be able to flow in God's anointing, not in your ability. Oh, no. Not in your ability to sing. Not in your ability to orchestrate. Not in your ability to administrate. But it take, if you want God's people to be blessed, you got to have an anointing upon your life. Because it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. It's the anointing that will break through. Can I hear you say yes? You're mad right now. Let me say, I'm not sad. I'm going through pain in my body, but I still have joy. I'm smiling. I don't feel good right now. Oh, I feel like this is in my bones, but I'm going to keep on smiling. Say, yeah, they lied on me. Y'all ain't never been lying on me. Y'all don't know about all that. Thank you, Jesus, for heaven. Say, I'm going to keep on smiling because I have joy. Say, yes. Come on, say, I'm not sick. I don't care what you're feeling right now. Jump up and say, I'm healed. Oh, I am not sick. They don't want to hear you say, he want to hear. some of y'all like me sick. Keep getting that ass. So, then they just build the chair. Get away from there. It'll be like no folks, 800,000 folks. They're going to start cutting everything. But I'm going to the church. They were praying for her. And the preacher was praying for her. People were getting healed and delivered. And the dog said, Mama, go up there and heal you. Can you so you can get healed. But she said, No, you make me stop, stop, stop. The dog the girl stop. Said, Mama, why come you didn't go up there for the preacher to pray for you? Said, Girl, if I go up there and that man lay here for me and I get healed, they'll cut my check off. <laughs> Came God that brought that check to bring something else. Came God. Sweet, that's that 
Nothing wrong just gonna be out of my wrong, y'all think. But look at your name and say, neighbor, I'm not a failure. I am an achiever. I'm not a loser. I am a winner. I'm not a quitter. I am a conqueror. Coming to an end now. I'm not an outcast. Because I Sit down. There was a woman that was driving home, saved, sister. Got you just that God saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Had five children at home. The oldest child was watching the children. And that's one time she listened to the Lord where she had them to stay at home that particular time. Because she had just left the church and the preacher was talking about being strong and stepping out on your faith. And, 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 and was talking about uh, sometimes you got to kind of uh, 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 believe God and, and when you don't know what to do, just stretch up your hands like this and let God, just let it go. Do that right now. Just do this, y'all. That feels good, doesn't it? Come on, say, let it go. Mother, I feel Only God knows the future. On her way home, she failed to negotiate a curve, and there was a bridge coming up in the curve. And she flipped over, and the car went down in that ravine, that, that, that body of water. And she was underwater, deep in the She didn't know how to swim. And she said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. But you know what? At that moment, while she was in that car and didn't know how to, am I all right? And didn't know how to swim. This no brain. She wasn't worried about herself. She said, Lord, I got five children. At home waiting on me. They need their mama because their daddy ain't nowhere. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let me die. Because my children need you. That's unself. That's her. But she said, Lord, but I don't know how to swim. And the water started sipping into the car. Thank you, Jesus. The water started sipping into the car. And she said, Lord, I got to die and swim. But I don't know how to swim. And the Lord said, break through the window. Come on, I'm anointed to what? Break. The Lord said, the Holy Ghost said, break through the window. And I'll do the rest. See, you just got to get on that fear. The fear of the unknown. She said, Lord, I can't swim. He said, I ain't that you can swim. Now. I said, break through the wind. And the, the, and, the, and the mother said, I'm doing this with my children. I got to get out of here. And she started breaking through the waters and started gushing in. She broke, kept kicking. She broke through the glass. And she didn't know how to swim. She said, I'm just going to hold my breath. And she held her breath, got out of the car, and just kicking in, trying to swim, fucking, yeah. swicking, kicking. And the more she did, the kicking and the fucking and doing this, she started going under. And the Holy Ghost said, stop that. I said, what did your pastor tell you to do? Just really throw your hands up and what? Relax. She stopped. She stopped bucking. And she threw it. She, when you stop bucking, as long as you bucking and kicking and doing what you do, you gonna go under. But I dare you to stop kicking. I dare you to stop bucking. Come on, do it, do it, do it. And when she, that's not I can't hold my breath no more longer. She just said, relax. She said, I can't do nothing but obey you. I'm about to die. And she, she threw her hands up. How many know something about swimming? When you relax yourself. Go when that sister threw her hands up, she started floating up. Thank you, Jesus. She got throwing up. And up. And up. And up. When you obey God, you can't do nothing but go up. And she went up until she got to the surface of the water. And she was able to breathe. She 
said, Lord, I still can't. I still can't swim. I said, yeah. She said, what did the pastor tell you to do when you throw your hands up? Just start praising. Just start praising. And she started praising. And when she started doing this, she started backstabbing. Read to me, to name God is in control, a church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.